Hello, uh, another video about auto turrets this time. So I tested, yep, auto turrets still work as good as ever. Here's a very basic cannon design. I did add something new though. The little thing on the bottom, I can tell when it rotates now. And based off of that, I know when it gets a lock, kinda. Meaning that I now can roughly estimate when to shoot. Pretty basic. 360 design, putting the topics of the last video in practice. Um, every single gun is 15 degrees off of um, set off of the center line. <sighs> Same thing, but with the fire control system, which when it rotates, it'll activate the main gun, meaning that when the target, when it has a target lock that's moving around, you know, as most things do when they're trying to dodge, it'll shoot. And as you can see here, a little project that I've been working on that I should hopefully cover in the next video. I will talk about it at the end of this video, so stick around, I guess. But yeah, the only things that I'm uploading this week are just these three things. And here you can more clearly see the exact spread out of the guns. So in between every pair, it's 30 degrees, one 15 degrees to one side and the other 15 degrees to the other side. And here's test footage. So fire control system is in effect. So as the gun jitters around, it'll trigger it to fire. And when there's no target, it slows down its fire rate. Still not perfect because a little bit of janky physics will still make it vibrate and therefore fire every once in a while. But the fire rate is reduced when it doesn't have a lock. And yeah, just pretty basic design. Auto turrets are really easy to make. Just go look at my other earlier videos. Just do know that the Spacebound update changed the recoil from 9 to 4. I forget what units were used. And, but other than that, you should easily be able to modify almost any turret design into an auto turret. Here I was testing this version. This is the version with fire control. You could tell it's working by the direction in which the lasers are aiming. And if they, the lasers start hitting. So the problem with larger 360 designs is that you also need a lot of framework pieces and they themselves are heavy and the entire thing gets very heavy. Even with the very little dampening, it's still thick, for lack of a better term. As you can see, if you look at where the laser is firing, it's 90 degrees off. It's tracking and it's trying its best, but it just simply isn't responsive enough. At this version. And this is already quite complexity intensive. So if you want a 360 degree radar, this is how you get pretty damn close. I just don't think this is the future of auto turrets. And yeah, that was just me checking that the jet dampening was really was at the low setting. Here you can see how the auto turret functions with outside interference. Because that little thing out there, the auto turrets want to lock on to anything that has a center of mass because that's a separate creation it'll sometimes attempt to lock onto it which naturally causes some issues and yeah okay the test footage will now loop so you could get a better view of what I'm doing now that you understand how everything is working all at once while that's going on, I'm going to talk about where I've been. So I know that this video has come out at a later date than usual. That's because I was originally planning to release a different video, which is actually done. I just haven't fully released it to the public yet because I'm waiting on someone else. I will say this as a teaser. Um, it has to do with armor. There have been a lot of armor developments. and I've been working with someone through a lot of them and there's going to be a lot of new, more advanced armor types in the game soon. And actually ways to defend against lasers for once. It's not perfect, but there's armor that doesn't get vaporized by lasers. And, okay, uh, and the other thing that, um, the other thing that I said at the end of this video, that weird block of two 360-degree radars stacked on top of each other, uh, but like with a couple of extra sensors. So 
That was a, an impractical test. Uh, but the idea was, if I can have multiple radars and link those radars to actual turrets, I then also need a way to tell when a turret, when a radar is damaged, so then I can ignore what it's saying. And because basically, next video, I'm going to be covering two things. Compartmentalization, the concept of separating each, each system out to make sure that when one da is damaged, the others are not. And redundancy, if a system is damaged, there's another system that could do its job. Um, yeah, that was an impractical test. The actual version is still in development, but hopefully once that is that version is done, I should finally be able to start using it in combat. Because all of this, if you look at it, very bare bones, very thin, and most importantly, very, very hard to armor because bullets, they don't have a hitbox for the first couple meters from the barrel. Meaning that if the radar, if the diameter of the radar itself is a couple of meters, I can't place it inside of an armor because then the bullets are going to load in their hitboxes and hit the armor. So that's really not an option. And hopefully you'll see next video. I figured out some interesting solutions. It's not perfect. Doesn't work amazingly every time. But... It works, hopefully, and yeah, that's it for this video, and I can't believe I have 200 subscribers, I have no idea what I'm doing.